Hello YouTube, it is everything Epan here back with another video. Today we are doing a video tutorial on how to install Windows NT 5.0 build 1592 in VirtualBox. Now this is uh, a part of the pre-beta of course of Windows NT 5.0. This is uh, one of the middle builds of this and uh, probably the last build that I'll be able to do a tutorial on because there's a lot of builds in here uh, for the pre-beta, but they, there's no ISOs at all for them. Um, and this is the server edition of Windows NT. There's workstation and there's uh, server, and there's even, uh, it'll eventually get to the professional versions as well uh, when it gets to the later builds of uh, this NT uh, into Windows 2000. So, um, yeah, so this is the server edition, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get right into this. So, um, there will be links in the description for VirtualBox, WinRAR, the MS-DOS 6.22 ISO, and also a link for Windows NT 5.01592. So um, go ahead and download all those if need be for whichever ones you do not have, and uh, go ahead and open up VirtualBox. And then we're going to go ahead and create a new virtual machine, and we're just going to call this Windows NT 5.0 build 1592 and leave the version at Windows NT 4 here and click next leave the memory where it is click next and then we're going to create to create a new virtual hard drive leave it at VDI next dynamically allocated next leave it at the default of two gigabytes and click create and here is our virtual machine and now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the settings and then we're going to go to storage here and then insert the MS-DOS 6.22 ISO. You might have to browse for it. Mine's here because I used it most recently. So then after that, we'll click OK. And then we'll go ahead and start up the virtual machine. It's going to start MS-DOS here. And then the first thing we're going to need to do is make a DOS partition um, because the ISO will not recognize any sort of drive um, on here if there is no partition created. So what we're going to do here is we're going to type the fdisk command and then you're going to hit enter one, two, three, four times and it will restart MS-DOS. And then the next thing we're going to do is type in this command format C colon to format that C drive. Hit enter. It's going to ask uh, confirmation that everything's going to be removed. There's nothing on it, so type Y. Enter. Enter a volume label, or you can just hit Enter if you don't want to have one. And now that is finished being created. So now what we're going to do is we're going to change the bio state because we have to do this in order for it to be reverted back to that date for this to be able to be in to install. So what we're going to do is type the date command, and you can see today's current date. And then we're going to type in the bio state for this, which is 07 31 1997. So this would be July 31st, 1997. Click enter. And if you type date one more time, it should confirm Thursday, July 31st, 1997. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to insert the 5.0 ISO, which is mine's here. You will have to browse for it and make sure you download it if you do not yet have it. And then what we're going to do is the drive letter normally is R, but just keep in mind what that drive letter is when it, when MS-DOS first starts. It should be R more than likely, but if it's different, be sure to uh, know about that corresponding letter and then type in. So, for example, it would be R colon, and then to type dir, it'll show two things here, CD-ROM and I386. So we're going to need to go into the I386 directory, type CD I386. And then if you type dir, it's going to come up with a ton and ton of files here. So it just these are all the files for the installation process. And what we're going to need to type is win nt forward slash b. Enter. It's going to come up with this blue screen here. And then it's going to ask where the files are located. So click enter. Should have it by default. It's going to copy the files. And then this is the only file this will have the uh, error to, that it's unable to copy. So just hit escape and then X to skip. And it should get through the rest of the copying files process here. And 
Um, this may take a little bit of time to complete. Um, and you can see up top here that it is uh, the server edition of this. Um, so it will take a little bit of time here to copy the files. So start to finish up here eventually when it gets to 99%. And then once it's done, it'll say the MS-DOS base portion of setup is complete. Make sure that you have no floppy disk, but we don't have a floppy disk in here. So um, now we need to actually remove this ISO. So remove the disk from the virtual drive and then hit enter to restart. And then it's going to um, do a little boot up process here. And then while it's doing this, It'll eventually pop up here with this welcome to setup screen. And then what we're going to do is hit enter. Hit enter again. And then you're going to need to hold down the page down button or key, not button. Um, because if you click it, it's up a ton of times. It'll eventually get down there. And then it'll finally come up with clicking F8 to agree to the terms. And then just click enter on this for the above list matches my computer. And then it's going to ask where to install this from. And we're going to install it on this drive here. And we're going to convert the partition to NTFS and hit enter. And then C to convert. And then um, leave it at the default location. Hit enter one more time. And it should check the drive. And then it's going to copy the files over, which will not take long at all. And then we're going to hit enter to restart the machine again. And then it's going to automatically boot up into the next part of the setup here. It'll kind of show that little text up at the top first. And then it will get into this next part of the setup and we'll actually have a GUI uh, come up here. So, takes a little bit here on the uh, first time um, to do it. Uh, and it's actually uh, doing the converting process of this and um, it's gonna ask to abort the auto check and we're gonna go ahead and do that and it's gonna convert the file system to NTFS and that's gonna try and load up one more time here and then we should be presented with the GUI interface of this setup so once again it may take a little bit here to come up and There it is, after you give it a little bit of time, this will pop up, pop up. And then it's gonna install some plug and play devices. And then the next thing is gonna come up with this setup screen here. So we'll click next to continue. It's gonna give you a list of installed devices. So just click next on that. And then be sure to ch uh, change to your keyboard layout and language to what you need. Then click next. And then uh, it's gonna ask for you to type a name so I'm going to type my channel name for this. And then licensing modes, I just click next on this. And if it comes up with this warning, just click OK. It's going to ask for the computer name. We're just going to type, uh, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a computer name here to correspond with the build number. And then click next. And then uh, we're going to make this a primary domain controller. Uh, and then click next. You can skip the password screen here. I'm going to do that by clicking next and then do no, do not create an emergency repair disk. Click next. And then it's going to ask for the optional components. Uh, you can do them as you please. Uh, you can go ahead and do that. It doesn't matter. Click next. It's going to click next one more time. And then this is the networking setup. We're going to do wired to the network and click next. Uh, install. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that and click next. Doesn't really matter because you're not going to get internet access anyway. Um, you can find your adapter and click next, next again, next another time, next to install the common components. Click continue on this screen and then TCP IP setup, click yes on this screen. A lot of the stuff really doesn't matter because you're not going to get internet access anyway. So click next, next. Um, it's going to ask to start the network. And then... Uh, it's going to take a little bit here and then it's going to ask to, um, you know, give it domain name and stuff. Doesn't matter because you're not going to be putting anything on this. Click next and then click on finish. And now it's going to begin the process of copying the files and configuring and all that. Uh, 
click OK on this screen and click Yes, click OK, click Yes. Now it's going to copy stuff over and again, click OK. None of this stuff really matters. Click OK again. And now we're on the date and time. Choose your time zone as needed. Um, of course, this is way wrong. Um, so then click close after you're done. And you can make this a little bit bigger if you want. So if you want to do that, then you click test and click OK. It's going to take uh, a few seconds to do this. And then eventually it will uh, come back here with uh, this screen. Click yes, click OK, click OK again. And now it's finally going to do the copying files process. So a lot of steps here for this for some reason. Don't know why it does that. I don't know why they had so many steps. I mean, yeah, you're setting up a server, but geez, they make it a lot more simpler now compared to back then, which is very nice. So it's going to keep doing some more uh, stuff here, and then uh, now it will come up with a error. Um, it's going to ask to view the log file. Just click no, and that's going to say Windows NT 5.0 is now installed, so we can restart. And then eventually it will go ahead and uh, restart the virtual machine. Might take a little bit here. There we go. It's going to restart the machine. And then we're going to click enter to go to NT 5.0. And we'll come up with this little blue screen again. And then. Uh, we'll be presented with the logon screen here. You can see it says Windows NT Server version 5.0. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and if it's stuck in here, click right control. And then we're going to do insert a control delete and then click OK. It's going to log you in. Now there is going to be no audio with this and guest editions does not work with this either. So, um, uh, if you would like to try and find a way to install audio, go right ahead. Um, but you do not need to if you do not want to. So um, once it logs you in, then we'll be uh, presented with a desktop and I can show you the build number and everything in here. And uh, that's basically the tutorial for you guys. So thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Um, if you thought that this helped you out or you like these kind of tutorials, be sure to leave a like down below. If you have any ideas for future videos, be sure to comment down below as well. Um, and if you guys are new to the channel or have not yet done so, go ahead and subscribe um, and hit that bell for post notifications uh, to be notified whenever I get a new video. Click cancel on this screen, cancel on this screen as well, just get rid of those. And here is the build number for you guys. If I right click my computer and hit properties, here it is, NT5.0-1592. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial and I will see you guys in the next video.